Israeli soldiers invaded Nabi Saleh, which is where Ahed Tamimi's family is based, the girl who slapped the Israeli soldier. And they killed her cousin, I think, at least someone with the same last name. So I haven't verified that it is her cousin, but it's a man named Azadin Tamimi from the same village. So I'm assuming it is her cousin. This wouldn't be the first family member that's been executed. This is actually multiple people now in her family, specifically, that have been killed. So they invaded the village like they do every day with intent to arrest him over a previous stone throwing incident. We know that, you know, youth, all they really have are rocks against tanks and you can go to jail for 20 years with intent to harm. What does that even mean? That's obviously arbitrary according to whatever soldier wants to say that he was intent to harm. So they were going to arrest him over this. Then they claimed he threw a rock when they were there. So of course they had to shoot him repeatedly. Not only that, they let him bleed out. They refused the ambulances to come. They refused medics on the scene. And all the village had to watch their friend die in front of them. This is a very normal occurrence. This happens on a daily basis. And so if anyone's still confused about why Ahad Tamimi slapped the soldier, well, this is the reality in the West Bank on a daily basis. So you can see the photos. It's horrifying. The pool of blood and another Palestinian kid dead. So that's in the West Bank. In Gaza... Uh, 500 Palestinians were shot in the head. 500 Palestinians were shot in the head. Holy shit. That was the tally of Great March of Return. The fact that not all of them died is incredible. That's how many people they wanted to kill. That's how many headshots there were. It, it's like, I have like goosebumps all over because it's so... Oh, God, it's just so, like, horrifying. Um, so 500 people were shot in the head. All the paramedics shot. I talked about in the last podcast, 19 in one day, two killed. It's really, really <laughs> awful, Abby. I mean, it's it's so heart-wrenching, and it just feels so... You just feel so isolated, like, caring so much about this because it just seems like everyone's turning a blind eye to it. So that's the part that makes me the most sad i think is just it's one thing to have all these people being senselessly killed for standing up for what they believe in and then to have like all these people in the united states who are funding this with their tax dollars just not saying a goddamn thing about it it's incredibly sad and depressing razan al najjar 21 year old medic running with her hands up in a white medical uniform who was shot in the back there's an incredible interview with her that if you want to cry, watch it because it's, you will. (laughs) She's talking about how she's a feminist. She's like, women can do anything men can. She's like, we're out here without weapons. She was like, we can do anything. We can do anything without weapons. What was even more disturbing after her senseless killing in cold blood by IDF forces is they first said, oh, we conducted an investigation and it was actually an accident. We shot her. Right. We didn't mean to shoot her. But then they couldn't just leave it at that. Then they started posting videos from the official IDF account claiming that she was a human shield. Right. Right. Because that's how fucking psychotic these IDF pieces of shit are. I mean, they just go to their old classic talking point and they dust it off. You know, 30, 40 year old talking point, just dust it off and then act like it's their biggest trump card. And all these idiots out there lap it up. And and the video that they posted said, she's throwing a grenade, therefore she's not an innocent medic. She's teaching people how to throw a tear gas canister away from them. I Yeah, I watched the video, you IDF psychopath fucks. That's what people do when they're getting tear gas canisters thrown at them, you stupid motherfucking liars. They pick them up and throw them in the other direction because tear gas hurts. It hurts you. It's painful. Anybody in their right mind, if they were near a tear gas canister and didn't have anywhere to run, or if they could get in there in time, would try to throw it in the other direction. People do that at Occupy every day. So to say that that's a human shield, that she's throwing a grenade, it's a tear gas canister, you lying, psychopathic, murdering motherfuckers. Yeah, and then her cousin, Ramzi Najjar, he went to the fence because he was like, my cousin was gunned down in cold blood. She was a medic. He goes to the fence with wire cutters and he just goes there and he's like, this is for my cousin. And of course he was immediately executed. And so his death brought the number to 
to now 126 because three more people were killed today. Yeah. And the IDF said that they're just going to start killing people who burn the kites, burning kites. And then there was a footage that came out of actually Israeli settlers burning kites. And uh, whoops, you didn't want that one to come out, did you? Burning their own land. One of those videos of the Israeli settlers trying to do the terror kites, as they call them, he accidentally ended up burning his own farm. I thought that was pretty funny. The kite went back down and set something in his own farm on fire. Razan's mother is wearing her bloody vest, her medic uniform, and she's out there today. She's going in Razan's spirit to continue to protest. There was also the first reported act of self-immolation in Gaza. Fathi Harb, a 21-year-old man who had a baby on the way, he set himself on fire. Oh, man. The only thing we can do is just to keep talking about it and bringing attention to it. I want to just say one more thing about, and I'm going to try to not completely sob, <laughs> um, but I did a press conference with the Council on International Relations in Gaza. There's a group of journalists there who wanted me to, to Skype in and mm -hmm. do a press conference with them because they wanted to see how the public was perceiving the Great March of Return and how the media was perceiving it. Because think about it, they get maybe two to three hours of electricity a day. Their Wi-Fi is very poor. They don't see what we see. They see Arab media. They asked me, did people care when we died? What did people say? And um, I, I mean, what do you say to that? <laughs> what do you say to that? And then at the end, I just said, what can I say to relay a message from you guys to, to my colleagues and, and Americans here. And they said, please tell them that we don't want to die. We love life. We love life and we want to live. So it's fucking sad, Abby. It's just such a disgusting way to look at human beings to think that they all want to die. They're just all part of some kind of death cult. That's why I can't stand people like Sam Harris. I point to people like Sam Harris and Jake Tapper as more damaging than even someone like like a like a terrible Zionist neocon because right. they're convincing all these liberal people out there that it's okay to dehumanize Palestinians. And when they die, it's not a big deal because they meant to die. They're a human shield. They're martyrs. Like that's what they do. It's just so weird that that's what we've warped ourselves into thinking out here. I mean, it's such denial. And of course they love life. Like, everybody human being loves life. It's very, very sad. And then you have Nikki Haley, the complete psychopath. I've never seen anything more insane than her running around the UN Security Council, literally begging leaders to vote for her insane resolution to blame Hamas, to blame Palestinians for their own misery, death, and destruction, and massacre. So Kuwait proposed a resolution to condemn Israel, which 10 countries voted for. Unfortunately, a lot abstained because they're fucking pussies. And then Nikki Haley, you know, raises her arm up to object and doesn't just do that. She creates her own bullshit resolution to blame Hamas and goes around begging everyone to vote for it. And not one person did. Not one country voted for this resolution. And so I guess if there's some sort of hope or glimmer of hope or silver lining, it's the fact that the U.S. has isolated itself to such extreme, extreme lengths that it looks so indefensible what's going on right now. And the fact that the U.S. and Israel are just so tightly aligned and that there is literally no line that either of these countries can't cross, that reflects very poorly on the rest of the world. And I think that people are not like, how much longer is the rest of the world going to accept this? I don't know. I don't know either. But, um, but yeah. yeah, the Nikki Haley thing was, uh, you saw was, that, right? It was cartoonish. I mean, she was, yeah. when you say begging, I mean, that's not an exaggeration. She's actually on the ground leaning on the desk of like all these different, you know, UN people. And you could see her saying, please, you could see her mouthing the word please over and over again. What a pathetic display, man. You have to have zero humanity to be that much of a piece of shit like she is. And to just have not basic, like, humanity in your soul, where you would denounce all of that as being, like, Hamas violence. I mean, what a psychotic woman. Mm -hmm. She's just a vessel, though, for, like, terrible 
you know, neocon propaganda and defense contractor propaganda. It's almost like she is the vessel for like all the worst policies of like the neoliberal resistance and Trump's terrible foreign policy, like rolled into one. Mm -hmm. I mean, she embodies it all. She's the worst. She's I mean, she's so worth just so funny. All these people were like terrified of Victoria Newland, like consortium news and stuff, and rightfully so. Um, and yet Nikki Haley is just like gets this pass that once again, it's this softness. It's like, why aren't you scared of Nikki Haley, man? Yeah, she's she's like a terrifying yeah. person. A lot of people lost their footing and are just being soft on Trump's people. When I say that, I don't mean neoliberals and I don't mean people on the right. I mean leftist anti imperialists are really dropping the ball in this. I really think they are. And I don't understand why. I don't get it. Like I said about the marijuana prohibition, there's something about the Palestine thing that seemed so far out of reach just a year ago when I was there to today. After this massacre, though, and this is what I was telling them in Gaza, I was like, you guys, you look totally insane defending this here. Like, really, a line has been drawn in the sand that if you are out there defending this, you look like a maniac. And that really is true. That is not mm -hmm. an exaggeration. Like, there definitely has been a shift. And even though the media is not covering that shift, it is there. Absolutely and young is. Jewish Americans are waking up. They're risking arrest. Average Americans who have a shred of dignity and humanity in their soul. Once you see the facts, you can't unsee them. Once you learn, you can't unlearn. It just takes just a glimpse of the suffering and pain because of our subsidization of Israel. Mm -hmm. It's seriously within reach. I, and I really am not saying that lightly. I think that we might see the apartheid state fall very soon. I really do think in the next decade, very drastic things are going to happen because Israel can't help itself. And it's inevitably going to get even more genocidal and crazy. That's the worrisome part is as it fall, because it's going to be a slow motion thing. As it gets more international community people looking down on it for its apartheid practices and genocidal practices, it's going to become even more desperate and will try to kill even more Palestinians at a more rapid pace. And that's the thing that we have to be most concerned about. I, yeah. It's going to be like a rat trapped in a corner, you know, kind of scenario where Better watch out. Once the world really turns against Israel, we have to remember this is a country with nukes, man. And they want bloodletting and they're not they, going to go up easily, just like yeah. the U.S. empire is going to go down easily. This is the first empire we've seen that's global and that has 900 military bases and military personnel in every fucking country. So what's going to happen when the U.S. empire falls? A lot of people are going to die because we're not going to go down without a fight. And that's yeah. going to be really, really scary because we have not seen that before. And someone just told me this the other day, and I'm going to leave you guys with this because it really stuck with me. Yes, history repeats itself, but the stakes get higher every time. And that's where we're at today, where history is instructive, but the stakes have never been higher. Environmentally, everything that we're saying, militarily, the refugee crisis that's coming up with the climate change. I mean, the stakes are very high. Yeah. But again, I'm going to use the Rahm Emanuel with great, <laughs> with crisis comes opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> there's a shift and there's an opening and it's happening with Israel. It's happening, you know, with marijuana. Hopefully we'll see psychedelics maybe come next. I mean, there's definitely things that we can look forward to that are positive. Hopefully it goes along with a mass awakening and consciousness shift. Otherwise, the world can't go on like this. Oh, and everybody out there to keep fighting the good fight. It's easy to get disillusioned and to unplug or even to like hero worship in times of crisis and confusion. But keep a clear head and just stick to what you know is right and true. That'll guide you. Yeah, you just can't get caught up in these petty squabbles. And I know I do tend to do that too. I'm trying to stop myself and just focus on what's really true and important. I hope that leaves us with something positive. <laughs> Apartheid's going to fall. And that's an amazing thing. And so just keep fighting because it actually is working. Like, I'm not joking. I really do think that something really amazing is going to happen. But again, at what cost? Whatever cost it will take is going to be worth the freedom and liberation of Palestinians at the end. And it's going to be worth 
crushing that criminal apartheid state and hopefully by proxy the U.S. empire because we know that that's the source. It doesn't matter if the rest of the world stands up, it's still going to come from the U.S. empire propping this up. You guys just center your focus. Just keep fighting. Um, There's so many of us out there. Thank you so much for listening to this. I'm sorry that it was a little bit more difficult, but I had to tell you that experience. Really appreciate all all your guys' support. Yeah, we really appreciate the support. And um, we could still use your support. If you want to donate to us and support us in that way, um, you can go to patreon.com slash media roots radio. And we have it set up so that you can donate per episode. Maximum, we're only going to charge you for four episodes per month. Um, if we end up putting out an extra one, you won't get, you won't have to donate for that one. It'll be like a bonus episode. So, thank you for all your support, everybody. And yeah, let us know if you have any feedback or comments or anything.